Hi, everybody, and welcome back to The Rush. We always love it when Leo Wilk uh, stops by to talk about the Vancouver real estate market. Of course, you know him as Condo Leo. Leo, how are you? I'm great. You must be busy, I'm guessing. It's busy out there, yes, very busy. Now, the Vancouver market, uh, it has its ebbs and flows, but it seems like springtime is always a time when things pick up. Is that fairly accurate? Yeah, and right now it's almost like trendy to be doing real estate. Everyone seems to be, if you're not, if you weren't before, you're wanting to get in it now because it's just, it's so, it's out in the news, it's everything's positive again and everything's going, so it's been a little bit crazy, actually, the last couple months. Well, let's talk about the Vancouver market mm -hmm. uh, this year compared to last year. What are the stats? on what is actually going on as far as sales go. Yeah, so I brought some stats. Um, so the first one is downtown east and west in Yaletown, condos and townhomes. So let's say last year from the beginning of the year till today, technically, or not until April of yeah. 2013, um, there was 445 condo townhome sales. Uh, the highest sale was 3.5 million. Average price per square foot was 661. And the average days on market was 51. And so that, that was, was last year. Last year, when they were kind of saying it was going to crash, it's going to die. We're all going to die. So this year, <laughs> in the same time frame, there's been 468 sales, so a few more sales, which isn't a crazy number, but there was more. Highest sale, 4.3 million, so we're about... Up there. Yeah, it's up there. The, the biggest difference is the average price per square foot, which is 703, compared to 661 last year. So we've seen an increase in prices in Yeah, and it's funny condos. because you just... You say to yourself sometimes, I don't, what, how many people are going to make money in real estate anymore? And next thing you know, they bought something last year and, and it goes up. I've seen people making money in two or three months all of a sudden now. So Yeah, and it is a huge risk. A lot of people think it's an easy thing to do. I'll yeah. just buy this place and sell it later and I'll be rich. Well, we get that a lot where it's someone calls you to price their home and I say, okay, what do you think? And they say, well, I paid this much. This is what I should list it for. And I say, well, let's, you know, we look at the numbers a bit more. And sometimes it's great. It works out. Sometimes we have to kind of. Those must be tough conversations to have with people who are listing their place. Yeah, and most people who follow real estate get it at that point. If they, you know, if they don't need to sell, I'll say, look, I recommend renting because our rental market's great too. So if you can hold on to it for another five years and have someone else pay it off for you, then maybe that's a suggestion because you, you haven't made money on right. this or something like well, that. Well, uh, we've talked about it last time that you were here is that I listed my place, mm -hmm. which was on the market, I think, for three months. Yeah. And then randomly went into multiple offers on a Wednesday it's, out of nowhere. Yeah. But multiple offers at this time of year, especially right now, seem to be commonplace. It's In the housing market, it's almost you can't get like, there's just you're gonna get multiple offers almost it's really really weird uh, condos it's random you're gonna see some condos we see oh that should sell in a couple days it sits for two three four weeks um, some stuff you, you said you have a lineup at the door of people who want to buy it's just it's really there's no rhyme or reason but some stuff goes some stuff doesn't it's funny because I was telling you in the green room I went to look at a place that mm -hmm. was I went upstairs in it I couldn't get downstairs there were so many people at the open house and then when I drove past it an hour later it was literally lined up around the block so when those places come on the market it's pretty much a guarantee that they will go multiple yeah and it's funny because some people don't even expect it when they're listing it next thing you know they're overwhelmed and they're going oh man did I underprice <laughs> this or what did they do rain up yeah exactly okay let's look at some listings that did sure. go into multiple offers the first one is uh, where is this East Vancouver this is East Vancouver so the address is 498 4998 Prince Albert it was yeah. priced at 669 had a decent sized lot 3200 square feet uh, 70 years old the interior of the house was 838 square feet are those walls really pink they're pretty pink yeah what was the square footage again 838 square 838 feet. 838 square feet. You want me to guess to see what this went for? Listed at 669, went into multiple offers. I will guess that uh, listed at 669, I'm going to guess that it went for 705. 801. No, you're kidding me. <laughs> no. It went for a hundred and one thousand. Eight hundred and one thousand. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That went for almost a million dollars. Yeah. And that's in East Vancouver. It had a nice yard. It was a really cute house, but it's crazy just. Well, when you're Fraser, talking the Fraser area, East under Vancouver. 900 square feet, but for young families, that is an up and coming area to yeah. get a house with a yard in anywhere in Exactly, Vancouver. and they can probably add on to it. That home might be bigger one day because it's. How happy would those sellers have been? Oh my God, and it, that's the thing where <laughs> did they re think it was going to sell for 800,000 when they priced it at 669? It's, it's, you just don't know, right? Well, there was the home that was making headlines. Uh, yes. That, you know, it did go into multiple offers, not as much as I thought, but it's crazy. People uh, sometimes price a little lower looking for multiple offers yeah but it's funny so for that first one like for 669 I don't think they expected 801 because then you would have been at 
six ninety nine or something. Yeah. But they just they went at six 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 nine, probably having people who can afford seven hundred thousand. So that doubled the amount of people that were going to come see it probably, and that's what created the hype. They you know the the kind of unwritten rule about multiple offers for each offer there is expect another ten thousand is what they say. Wowzers. Okay, let's move on to another one. This one is also in East Vancouver. Yes. It's same street. This is also on Prince Albert. Prince Albert, but this is the Mount Pleasant area now. Right. So 2344 four, Prince Albert. Okay, so this is 2,500 square feet. Yeah. Priced at uh, 669 Same price as the last one. Yeah, this one, uh, one difference, it does have an unauthorized basement suite in it, so a little bit of a mortgage helper there if needed. Okay. I'm going to guess that this one, considering it's, oh my gosh, it's uh, triple, quadruple the square footage of the last one. We talked about? Yeah, 838 compared to uh, seven. And it, okay, I'm gonna guess it went for 850. 780. 780. <laughs> this went for less. Went for less, yeah. And I again there's no I don't it know. just goes to show that really everybody who prognosticates about Vancouver real estate, it, it, it is impossible to tell what will happen. And it's, it's literally, maybe this person who got that one looked at the other place, but they didn't love it. They loved this home, and there were, or maybe it was a developer who saw the potential of building a duplex or whatever it's zoned for, right? So okay, let's move to East 15th Avenue. Yes. Uh, this one's 2,500 square feet. What is this one? This one looks really cute. Yeah, priced at 775 uh, Again, has a unauthorized basement suite. Uh, 2,400 square feet, 2,500 square feet. It looks really nice, very well maintained. 775 is the listing price. I'm going to guess uh, 900,000. 871. Wow! <laughs> that first house is still blowing me away. Okay, East 50th <laughs> Avenue. This one is a little bit smaller. It's 900 square feet. And this place. Oh my look gosh! At this thing. So <laughs> that looks like a teardown. It's priced at 788. It's got a decent sized lot, 33 by 124. Look at the roof. 900. The, the listing said. This is lot value only. Like that house apparently is just. So it looks unsafe. Did they have any pictures of the inside? I'm no, guessing no. <laughs> no. So it, it was listed at 788, 900 square feet on the inside. It's it's a tear down for sure. How big was the lot again? Lot was 33 by 124. I'm gonna guess this was listed at 788, uh, and it's on East 50th. Yeah, 1895 East 50th. I'm gonna guess this went for 850. 892. Oh my. This was Last time we did this, gosh. we nailed each one. Too. I did. Yeah. This time I'm so off my <laughs> game. I'm mad at myself. I haven't even been close. North Vancouver. Okay, so this is another market that's been going crazy. East Bananas. and North have been crazy. This is a beautiful little house. The, well, and uh, this one I looked at myself with some clients. It needed at least 100 to 150 on the inside. It had knob and tube wiring. It looked pretty decent, but this thing needed a lot of work. It's funny how superficially things can look so appealing. And it, it, it did look good when you're there, yeah. but it just knob and tube wiring right there. You're tearing out walls. You're doing stuff, so it needed a lot of work. Um, the lot was 4,700 uh, square feet. Uh, it was a hundred hundred year old, but it was kind of cool because it was like a heritage home in yeah. North Van, which it's a character home, which was yeah. nice. Um, the size on the inside was 1,600 square feet, and it did have a suite underneath as well. 799 is the list price. I yeah. guess 925. 868. Oh. <laughs> and the funny thing about this one, we sat down with the realtor selling, and we talked to them about the offers. There were seven offers, and what they said to us was, "We are not looking at offers that have a subject on them." And we just said, "Wow, you were, we're not allowed to protect our clients." to make an offer on this house, and that's what the market is right I now. Was, uh, I saw that a lot when I was looking for places. Uh, a lot of people were just walking in and putting in offers without subjects. Yeah. Why is that dangerous to do as a real estate agent when you have a client? Why do you recommend that they do not do that? Well, if, if you're going to do that, let's say, get everything done first. Don't just think you're approved for the mortgage, because what if the appraisal comes back? What if you can't get insurance? Something could go wrong. Just make sure you're taking care of everything first. and then. As a realtor, I mean, we need to sign off that you're okay with doing this because I don't recommend you going subject free if we haven't taken care of things. Even if they've got a gun in my head say, we want this place, I don't care what, I say, you've got to be protected because at the end of the day, let's say you, you get it, you put your deposit in, but all of a sudden you find out you can't get it, then there goes your deposit of 20, 30, 40, 50 grand. I think there's so many things that, uh, you know, first time buyers especially don't realize that if they don't fall into place, you can lose your deposit. And also, you might miss out on getting a, another place that could have been perfect. A lot, I, I read a static, I can't remember where a long time ago, and the biggest regret of first time home buyers was they didn't take a little bit more time to find the place. They just jumped at the first one they liked, which is understandable. You see something you like, you want to get it. And yeah. in this market, unfortunately, there's 30 other people who want it, so you kind of have There's to. There's pressure. Yeah, you're under pressure, but just. You don't want to make an expensive mistake. And it is a very expensive mistake. Yes. Okay, let's move on to our favorite, which are the bad MLS yes. listings. Now, these listings were found by Leo. Places actually listed for yes. sale. Yes. What are we looking at today, Leo? I haven't seen these yet. Well, the first three. Ah, oh, clean up. 
And then, you know, for the person taking the picture, I mean, my photographer is great because he would have moved all that and made the bed. And what we sometimes do is, if a room is trashed, we'll take a picture of the trashed room, fix it up, and then put it exactly like we found it. So if, if that's how they want to live, they'll keep it like okay, that. Okay, I'm even confused here. I'm assuming this is a bedroom, it's but a I'm, bedroom. I'm seeing workout gear. I don't even know what's outside the window. There might even be someone hiding under the bed. There could be. <laughs> I, you know, you don't... And, I know it's difficult for some people who are renting their places if they have tenants that don't yeah. want to move. They might th make things as difficult as possible. But, yes. Uh, that's not going to sell. It's just, and the difference there too, he used uh, his own camera or a phone. If you hire someone who's a professional, even if they're taking pictures of a terrible place, it's they're going to make it look better. It's dollars that could make you yes. thousands. It just makes such a difference. Okay, let's move on to the next one here. Uh, bad MLS photo number two. What is this? It's a <laughs> and I have a listing in this building, and someone else, like, it's, it's just a picture of, of a picture in a lobby. And I'm going, why would, what is this? How are you selling the place with uh, this? Uh, are you selling the painting? I, that's what I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> I, I don't get it. So that, I saw this one, and I said, this, this deserves to make the it does. Uh, okay, next picture. Uh, let's have a look at the next Your one. Your favorite shot. Oh my gosh, the selfie. Yeah. Now I'm, oh, and you know, they've even got the reflection of the washer dryer. Are they trying to do a yeah. twofer here? Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's taped up toilet. <laughs> oh, taped up do toilet. Do not use the toilet. Is this a hotel? <laughs> so I don't know what was going on. Okay, uh, let's move to the next shot. <laughs> yeah, so these, crazy. these next two, kind of going back to our theme of guess the price. So these next two photos, I want you to guess the price of this listing. Okay, so I get to look at two pictures. Yeah. Here's picture number one. Here's picture number two. Mm -hmm. And these are in Vancouver? Vancouver, this is Coal Harbor. Okay, let's move again to the, can we go back to the, the last picture? It looks like it's a, probably a bigger place. Mm -hmm. A little little furniture. Am I allowed yeah. to know square footage or anything? Coal Harbor is one 1,430 of the most, square feet. Oh, 1,430 square feet in Coal Harbor mm -hmm. is gonna be over 800,000. Quite a bit over, two, two million. Two million dollars! <laughs> yeah, so, and, this ties back to we're always bashing the bad pictures, but this is $2 million. To get paid on $2 million, the person is paying the realtor a lot of money. So to not put in professional marketing drives Were these us the only two crazy. photos? There was more photos, but Both they were photos. just poor quality. So And this, those were probably the best two because it was the living room and the dining or whatever. So you're I, selling something for $2 million and you're not hiring a, a professional photographer. The thing, you're there's there's $150,000 condos out there that look better than that one. Absolutely. Because they've hired someone to do the pictures. Wow. Okay, let's move to the next one. I'm going to guess yeah. the price on this one here. I'll give you the deets. This one is Yale Town, uh, and 2,400 square feet, so it's big. 2,400 square feet in Yale Town. Uh, somebody went into a time machine to get the furniture. <laughs> the photos are really dark. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna guess 1.5. 4.8. What? Been on the market. Everybody just did this in the room. I give up. Been on the market for 828 days. You're kidding. They haven't even taken it off and come back on. They haven't, they just, they've just put it on. You know, it just makes you wonder who owns these places. Well, it, it sometimes is also, how do they find these people who are listening? It's like, is that, is that your mom's friend's home or something? You know, that just said, oh, this, my, my friend's daughter does, or son does this. And they just, they just don't realize that there is better out there. And I, I took pictures once with my own camera, once in my career, I think, because I couldn't access the place. And the backlash I got from my client, I learned that lesson that day that I would never, you ever. so many tough lessons, just, Leo. Yeah, I know. I just, <laughs> I said to myself, because she was so upset, and I, I said, I couldn't get in. The minute I could, I just ran in and did pictures because the tenant was giving us a bit of a hard time. Yeah. I never made that mistake again. So How difficult is it for you as a real estate agent? Because uh, I looked at a couple of places where it was being rented by people who the places were filthy. They were beautiful yeah. neighborhoods. Uh, they were great places. Yeah. Uh, but the rental tenants, it, they're, they they weren't allowing access. It, I just re feel really bad for the people trying to sell these places. Yeah, and sometimes it's dealing with tenants. Like I understand what they're going through. It's it's a terrible it's process. In, it's invasive. You know you're getting kicked out eventually. So yeah. just don't. I say don't come in guns a blazing. A lot of realtors <laughs> come in there and they're just like, bah, we're doing this, 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 and they take over. I like to come and say, look, I get what you're going through. Here's your rights as a tenant, just so you know them. And I talk to the owner. I say, can I talk to them about the rights? Yes, of course, because we want to do it legally. I, depending on the person, I usually show up with a bottle of wine, a case of beer, and something. And say, I'm going to be invading your privacy. Please accept this as just like a thank That's you. That's really nice. Well, I, it is a tough thing. I, and I get it. Like you're having someone come through your house every day, and you know you're getting calls from some guy you probably don't like. And I'm going, <laughs> hey, can I show your place again today? Can I kick you out at seven o'clock tomorrow night? And it's just, it's you just want to just be. 
empathetic to the person yeah. and I think it'll go a lot longer or a lot further than just coming in and it'll make it easier for everybody it's it's the owner's right to sell of course but it's also the tenant's right to have a comfortable life while he's there and he can they can really help you sell that place yeah they really 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 can bottle of wine works wonders bottle of wine well. yeah thank you so much if you want more information uh, be sure to visit Leo's website uh, never gets boring talking about <laughs> real estate condoleo.ca we're going to take a short break here on the rush